Uh, yeah, what's up, everyone? My name is Richie Marufo. I, uh, as I said during the promo, I wear many caps, many hats. Uh, really, what I mean is I, I'm involved with a lot of projects. Um, I'm the project director of the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. We're, run, we're all past those longest running open mic, and uh, we've been able to stay alive during the pandemic, and, and it's been very interesting. I'd love to explore that later on. Um, I'm also an educator. I, I teach English um, at the, the college level. Um, and do writing workshops all around the city for different age levels, all all sorts of different age groups. Uh, I'm a spoken word poet, performer, musician, uh, and host. I host uh, many things. Obviously, the the open mic, and uh, more importantly, in, in near near to my heart, and something very new, and something you're familiar with, uh, Sun City Sounds. <laughs> exactly, so, and you're a great host for our Sun City Sounds too. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody. Welcome to this episode of um, the El Paso Creators Podcast Show. Of course, our guest here, Richie Marufo, like he mentioned, educator and MC, project director, show host, a lot of different projects, a lot of creative things he it's runs. You know, man. <laughs> the one man team with a bunch of things. But I mean, dude, the way you get them done is amazing. Um, before we get this episode started, I also wanted to thank our our first sponsors that we have actually, um, Taco Avocat. Um, so if you guys want to try delicious tacos, you know, healthy, organic, you know everything's freshly made not frozen go ahead and hit them up um so rich let's get into it you know the first thing i wanted to talk to you about was the barbed wire open mic series i know that you've had that for a long time a long long time um <laughs> and it's progressed really good so um it's even internationally now something we were speaking about before so tell us a little bit about that how you got started in that where it's at right now how much time do we have on this show uh, <laughs> okay let me take a giant breath so um yeah barbed wire open mic series and and we do um, affectionately use the acronym to shorten it up. So we, um, a lot of people see this when we promote it. It's B W O M S. Um, I like to say B WAMS. Some people say BWAMS, BWAMS, BWAMS. I, I think B WAMS has like a, a direct kind of kick to it and has, has a feel to it. But, uh, yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Barbed wire has been around, uh, in El Paso since 2007 and, you know, has been, I think the longest running open mic platform for, in, in which, you know, if you're not familiar with an open mic, it's pretty, I think, pretty self-explanatory, but it's, you know, open to anyone who wants to perform. The mic is open. Um, usually all you have to do is, is sign up. And so we, you know, over the years, um, over a decade at this point, uh, we've had all sorts of different performers, uh, former U.S. Poet Laureates, uh, bands, big name bands, people coming up, um, published poets, award-winning writers, um comedians traveling comedians like you know all sorts of names like people who've been on hbo uh it's it just i could write a book on it probably but i i didn't start it i took over for this thing around 2012 but i've been doing it for a while now but um it's created some of the most meaningful relationships i've had in my life from all the people who participate in that Oh, yeah. And I mean, like, like we mentioned, you know, you have it not just here locally, but you've also caught interest of other people, um, different cities, you know, seeing the, the inspiration of, of the creative literature, the inspiration that you're creating here, not just here, but also around America, you know, you said internationally as well. Um, and you're inspiring people with it, you know, but um, also, right, right. What, what, what do you think is the inspiration behind it? the inspiration behind it well okay so i mean and the importance um, and the importance yeah I, so i didn't really expand on it too much but obviously uh during this world war, worldwide pandemic we we lost our ability to, to to do live shows and everything shut down and uh, i'm not against that at all you know i'm all about safety and precaution so i get that um so we had to shift and adapt and i, I know a lot of people have been doing it it, ha it hasn't been easy not you know by any means it has not been easy but um there's a lot of silver lining and a lot of things and a lot of dark things and in this case we were able to start an online show a monday night open mic um i just realized so many of us were isolated and i know people were feeling that that social isolation social distancing has that kind of nuance and and the first thing i did i, I was trying to create a show like a podcast radio show where people send in their their audio and I do have an, an episode of that, and I called it Spacious Solidarity because I wanted to turn it on its head. Social distancing is almost negative, like we're staying apart, but Spacious Solidarity is we're coming together for this cause in a positive way. And so on our on our YouTube channel, I, I do have a volume one out, and I actually have a volume two, like pretty much all set up and ready. Uh, ready. Now that school's over, I'm going to 
be putting that out there and, and doing future episodes. But um, I also started the stay at home open mic. And I named it that because, you know, I do want to emphasize the fact that we're staying home, but we're trying to focus on on the positive. On, trying on trying to do the best that you can. Yeah. 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 We're focusing on on in times of, of darkness and times of negative negativity and destruction. Uh, it's important to to create. And so we've been able to build a community and, and as you've mentioned, um, has become national. We do have at this point regulars who join us from the West Coast, East Coast, New York City, Florida, Las Vegas, um, Los Angeles, and even internationally. We do have we have had on in some instances people who have um, either stayed up or set their alarms for 3 a.m. and have gone to perform at our open mic. That so we had great. a dude from Nigeria yeah. jump in. He just woke up. He was a little sleepy, but he still came with some fire poems. The dedication. Uh, Hungary, London, uh, and we're still connecting. So that's definitely yeah. one of the silver linings out of all this darkness. We're finding a way. To, obviously, like El Paso Creatives and the crew and everything we've been doing is just, yo, we're we're staying afloat. Exactly. Keep that thing going. Yeah, and I like how how creativity on itself, you know, it can it's not limited. It could expand anywhere. Like you said, you reach people from London, Nigeria, you know, it's, it's always a positive thing. You know, even during this pandemic, a lot of things are going wrong. You know, a lot of bad news you hear negative things. And then you're through creativity, you're able to bring some type of positivity and light here, not just here in El Paso, but like in different cities and expand it just like you've been able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, what has also been some of the, the hardest points for you and some of the challenging parts for you to, to keep what you're doing now, you know, um, I guess keeping it up float. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I kind of maybe briefly alluded to it, but I think just kind of being distanced and not being able to do this thing live, um, uh, does take its toll. And I think, I think, you know, this time has affected us all in so many different ways. And I think, um, you know, personally, you know, I think some of us just have some some days that are harder than others um, to be motivated to yeah. to feel. I think um, in, in terms of if we're talking about creativity now, first of all, creativity is like a nebulous term. There's all different types of it. Right. There's um, artistic creativity. There's even everyday creativity. Um, and, and I think if you were already associated with with creating something. I felt I feel that like during the pandemic and, and quarantine and staying home, a lot of us felt the pressure to produce. And I think um, that isn't necessarily healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone. First of all, everyone's different. Everyone has different types of uh, personality traits to reacting to things. And um, some people can work nonstop. You know, some people need rest. Um, so we've been trying I, to me, part of the struggle is I think taking the time to recognize ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I think that's an important part of our process anyway, as a creative or anything in life. I think it's always important to be introspective and self reflex reflexive on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not an easy process. No, sometimes we, we, we figure out our limitations and that can be a tough realization. And, you know, like I said, sometimes I think a lot of us felt the pressure to produce. And because um, for me personally, I had a hard time creating stuff. I'm like, I'm going to write my, I'm going to write three books. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then it just, it just not, did not pan out that way. And when, what I quickly realized is I needed to focus a lot on, on mental health and finding balance. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my, my, my theory, I do this workshop a lot at EPCC where I teach. Um, you know, I do creativity workshops talking about creativity as breath you know breathing is so important yeah um if you think about it we inhale we exhale breathing is is you know two parts of a whole inhale exhale and so creative input and creative outputs the same way like we breathe in a balanced way if you just like do a quick inhale and hold it your mm. lung you're gonna start constricting you gotta let it out so you gotta you gotta you gotta take things in for sure but you know you gotta express at, at the other end of the table you can't just like let all your breath out and leave it there right same thing you'll run out of breath you'll start turning blue you need to bring in breath and so finding that balance is how to intake and outtake and find what works for you input output input output and 
um a lot of us were forced to confront that yeah during these times yeah exactly and i like how you just said we were forced to it because none of us were really ready for this and as much as and i always I always look at it this way and i always tell people this way i'm like in a way COVID has given us um opportunity to to see life in a different way but also experience things that we maybe wouldn't have done you know yeah yeah i think that's like just one of the key aspects of us as humans survival it's like the survival instinct how do we react to adversity how do we react to tough times and we learn a lot about ourselves and i think i'm going to say this for people listening right now it's so be be easy on yourself if this is a journey right no one's going to expect like the world of you i think i think sometimes you know i hate to say it but just like putting it out there on the table uh sometimes like like this whole like productivity scene and like the whole hustle 24 7 that can be kind of toxic sometimes you know yeah. um, that doesn't work for everyone you need really a doesn't. break yeah you, your mind yeah the way our minds work but again it, it everyone's different if mm -hmm. you look at some of the routines of like famous historical creatives uh, whether it be writers filmmakers sometimes they have like crazy routines but maybe their their body chemistry is different their mind chemistry so um sometimes we try and emulate that when rather we should be focusing on what works for us when are we most productive and so again it goes back to the whole uh self introspection aspect of it you know mm -hmm. i think that's the first step like what are your strengths what are your weaknesses when am i most creative like i find i'm i'm super active and creative at, at nighttime that's just how i am yeah. i just feel inspired in my heart like that's my soul mm -hmm. if i try and work in the morning i'm just like oh hold on i need to stretch out i need to yeah. make coffee hold on i gotta watch this show first oh let me take a nap like it's just hard to get going yeah but and then you got to get things people, done throughout the day yeah 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 so yeah and, and i like that because um you know when people when people start projects you know they either go in it with a with a different motive and also, you know, I was talking about, you know, how you take these breathing techniques and, you know, and you pace yourself. I always tell everybody, like, pace yourself at your own time. You know, nobody's rushing you to do this. You know, no one's telling you to get married by 25 or graduate college at 21 or things like that. You know, move at life at your own pace. Don't think that, like, you know, because society's point of view is telling you, like, you need to get this done now. You know, you don't really have to. You have all the time in the world to do whatever you need to do at, at your pace, you know. Mijo, mija. Where's your, <laughs> how come you're not married yet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, there's, there's some, I know a lot of us are like younger generations are still yeah. kind of fighting that. And but I feel yeah, like that's no, what stresses people out, you know, it's just that uh -huh. there people put these things in their head of like, Hey, you got to figure this out by this time and this time and this time. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just, it's it, like hey, you mentioned before, it turns unhealthy for their mind and they don't pursue what mm -hmm. they want to do and what they're passionate mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we make a lot of sacrifices. Um, and, you know, I mean, everyone has their own choice. But as long as we're, we're cognizant of that, and mm -hmm. I, I agree with what you said completely. Uh, one of my, uh, my often iterated phrases is that uh, there are many paths up a mountain. I like that. Sometimes we will like people will look like, damn, they're all the way up there. Or wow, they went up that side of the mountain so fast. And sometimes you just oh, yeah, you got to take that slower path, but you're still going up there still getting there. Yeah. Might and even so, be a different mountain. <laughs> like <okay. laughs> so so what have been some sacrifices that you maybe you had to endeavor or maybe mm -hmm. cross paths with in order to to be able to do what you're doing now or some of the negative mm -hmm. things that you you got past them passed by? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um <laughs> well, first of all, like I mean, based off the intro, you can tell that I'm involved with a lot, and I think that doesn't not come with sacrifice, you know, it, it definitely um there's a generalist aspect to it you know mm -hmm. i love to experience things and and go out and and so like in terms of sacrifice you know instead of focusing on one thing and becoming like super master that like you know education you know i love teaching you know i went to school studied in my mas master's program and and studied literature um i love teaching i love teaching college um it would have been fun to like go into school and like pursue like a doctorate degree yeah that's like in the news all of a sudden right what a doctorate means and all that exactly uh, but you know i think about that some some i think about that sometimes i would have not been able to do everything else that i've been able to do like all the open mics all the other social aspects and 
at the same time, you know, like uh, I, I'm a musician. My my uh, probably like best in, the instrument I'm best at is, is saxophone. And mm-hmm. like again, like I could have gone really good like into it and studied music. I didn't. So uh, it, I think sometimes there's choices, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Not to say is that not to say that when you choose something, you can't still do these things. I think that's one of the beauty th- beautiful things for a lot of us um, nowadays is that I think we all have the freedom to explore um, different avenues. Yeah. So, and I think the younger, the younger you are, I, you should definitely try it out and see what you feel and what works for you. Mm-hmm. And especially like when you, when you're barely getting started out, you know, try to experiment different things, you know, like whether you don't know what exactly on the creative aspect you want to do, go out and draw something, go out and take pictures, go out and maybe, one try modeling or try to make a film see what you, see what you want to do you know and then prioritize that um rather than just trying different things trying to prioritize each one that's something i wanted to ask you too because you have a lot of different projects going on you have a lot of things you're doing how do you for one prioritize each one and then how do you stay organized and you know controlling without freaking out or you know all that mm-hmm. yeah that depends like i mean that's changed over the years and so um to, to kind of rewind a little bit from, from what we were talking about. I do think that it's interesting that, um, I'm trying to gather my, my thoughts here. Um, I'm, I was getting fancy. I'm like, let me rewind <laughs> and let me put a bookmark on that and go back. But that, that's, that's what I get. Um, so obviously if you listen to me talk, like I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, it's pretty chaotic. And so, um, I'm, I'm always experimenting to see what, with what works. Um, thankfully we do live in an age where, we do have a lot of technology available to us. Um, at the same time, you can't go wrong with classic pen and paper. I'm trying to write everything down all the time. Yeah. Um, and if I don't, I forget because, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, there's so much out there. But I mean, the point I was trying to make right now, just before moving on to that, is like, I think also one of the benefits we have is I think a lot of us are becoming more generalist. And you see that a lot in creative industries where, and you know, in the past, someone might have become like just straight audio expert. Now they're learning, learning how to do photography and video and lighting design. And, you know, I think these these uh, applicable skills, you know, I think you see more people learning like how to do Photoshop, mm-hmm. how to do Premiere, how to edit videos, how to edit sound, like all these things. You see that in, in the past, you'd be called a generalist. But really, it's just like I'm making myself, uh, you know, I can do whatever I need to do back in the yeah. day. For the open mic, people would always ask, oh, who makes your flyers? Who makes your posters? Well, me, I had to teach myself how to do yeah, it. Exactly. It was just easier. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what I wanted and, and you know, mm-hmm. it's harder sometimes collaborating. But anyway, to, to get where you're, where you're, what you asked me just right now, um, lately, you know, I've been experimenting with, like I said, pen and pad, classic. I use Google Calendar for everything. Yeah. Um, I, you know, as soon as I, there's something there, I, put, I make an entry. Uh, and along with that, Google tasks go hand in hand. That helps. I set alarms, making different calendars. Yeah. Um, and, uh, earlier before pre-show, we were talking about notion. Damn. I am falling in love with this thing. Um, productivity note-taking app. Um, it does kind of scare me how, when I research it, there are so many people who have YouTube videos, like how I use notion to run my life or like rule my life. (laughs) It's a damn like too dependable. that's a, well, that's a certain personality type, right? Yeah. Type A, type B. Um, I'm doing this because I need the structure. I need the organization. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit too much for my side. It's a little overwhelming. And we talked about it. So Notion's been interesting. Um, like any of these, whatever app you use, what, Notion, it could be something else. I mean, back in the past, it was Evernote, Trello. You hear all As- Asana. You hear all these yeah. things. I mean, in the end, it's, it's up to you, your motivation, your will. Do you stick with it? Yeah. So, it- like I mentioned earlier, I hope that I do stay motivated and, and up to task with, with uh, these current ways of trying to keep track of everything. Cause it is a lot of projects mm-hmm. and you'd probably know this. Like yeah. um, I like to say yes to things. There's it's some, it's one of those magical words. Yes, please. And thank you. Yeah. And when you say yes, it opens doors <laughs> mm-hmm. and I've, if I've it's not heard, a good, yeah, sorry about that. What's up? I've always heard too. It's like when people, even if you don't know how to do it, just say yes to it and figure it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, it's a huge personality, um, especially in, in a certain context of like maybe a business, 
you know, running a project. Uh, you might not know, but yeah, if you say yes, you you take charge, and that kind of puts you in in, in your own destiny. Exactly. Yeah. So to speak. And I like how you mentioned notions and all that because I'm with you. I'm on the same boat as you. You know, I have a film production going on. I have a bunch of things lined up that we want to do for our pastor creatives. Um, the place that I'm working at too. We have to have a lot of things organized. So it is scary how how much we depend on, for example, notions, you know, and how, like you said, people like <laughs> user put their whole life on there, you know, and just live day by day by notions. But um, there is tools like that. And I like how you mentioned that there's tools like Google Calendar and tasks like that to to manage not your life, but manage, you know, different projects you do and, you know, how, how you go about each creative aspect of it. But I think that's something that mentally um, destroys a lot of people is that they don't know how to they pick up too much things and they don't know how to to go about them and they stress themselves out. They have mental breakdowns, you know, and they end up yeah. giving up. That's one of the things I, I realized when I, when I first started like being a quote unquote creative, you know, is um, I started doing filming. I started doing photography first and then I started doing graphic designing and then I started doing videography and I was trying to pile it all up into one. Yeah. And then, you know, by the end of it, I was like, oh man, I missed this meeting or I missed this deadline or I didn't get this done <laughs> or I said yes to this, but then I didn't live up to it. And so I was all over the place and, you know, that's some, some of the stuff that, that I learned from, you know, and, you know, getting more organized and making sure that you pace yourself, taking one thing at a time. Um, what are, what are some of the things you've maybe learned? Some mistakes you've made that you've learned from. I made plenty of mistakes, <laughs> but the most important part is that I, I made sure to learn from them. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I, I tend to be worried. So I'm like, how can I condense this without spilling all the tea, all the cheese, man? <laughs> no, I mean, I, um, it's, it's just, um, if I go back to that, I think a very popular word in these discussions is, is balance. I do think that sometimes, uh, maybe we get too, too into our work that we, we lose maybe important personal relationships. Um, uh, definitely a thing sacrificing that, um, there's, there's a lot, a lot of things, you know, sometimes you just, you're, you're not sure. We were just talking about it. Sometimes you might say yes to something that you don't know. And sometimes you, you create partnerships or collaborations that maybe just don't work out. Um, I think, you know, when we say learn, learning from it, that's, you know, it's such a, an umbrella term, but like, we have to, again, think about, well, why didn't this work? Why didn't we, the two of us not connect or how did we not communicate? that this failed and it's mm -hmm. always important to to think of these things um and i guess that's that's the best part is that it's it's just a step you know yeah. <laughs> anyone who has been successful at anything has failed just as many times or even more and you're to always going to keep spot. going you know you can't really avoid it you know there's always going to yeah. be a lesson learned even even at like i think i met this one guy who was like 90 something and even he still makes mistakes you know yeah and it's just it's life you know but you gotta learn how to how to take them appropriately and learn from them rather than dwelling on them yeah yeah i mean part of that is like being open to like knowing that well i guess it's like being humble like knowing like because sometimes people get like become like i'm an expert and they get comfortable yeah. don't become comfortable i think that is a danger to any artist anyone who's who's creating anyone who's i get in any field actually i think if you're if you get comfortable, that is a dangerous place. Always be willing to learn new things, to learn from others, because the world is always changing. Yeah. You know, the whole world around us, people, people are always changing. We're never the same people. Our COVID. circumstances change. COVID happened. Obviously, right? We did not predict that. So, you know, one of the most important skills you can learn is to be adaptable, to, to be humble, be open to maybe knowing that, you know, admitting that you're wrong sometimes. And that's fine. I think it's crazy how, how people are, are steadfast in their ways. You know, mm -hmm. we broaden our horizons and the world becomes much more beautiful that way. Yeah. And so, so we talked about, you know, everything that you're doing throughout these whole projects, but I first want to just take it back before you even not be like, even before you started these projects, but when you were even maybe a kid, you know, like what, what made you, what sparked you to be, uh, you know, creative or, you know, choose this pathway? Well, um, that's, that's a great, uh, framework. So man, let me think all the way back then. Um, well, the dinosaurs, exist. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, 
first of all, I think, you know, when we're kids, we're at our most creative, like there's this, this uh, natural curiosity and spark that uh, I think most of us have. If, if we've been a kid, if we've been around kids and we see kids who, who are like, what is that? What does that do? What does that do? Why is this blue? Why is this here? What is that's like beautiful. And so when I when I teach writing, when I teach especially poetry, I always I always uh, tell people like go back to when you were a kid and you had that childlike wonder. Yeah. Because somewhere between then and and becoming an adult, something dies a little bit. That childlike wonder. And so you know when I was a kid, I mean I just I just wanted to express myself. Um, I'm learning the world around me. Uh, I definitely remember at a very young age, draw, you know, wanting to draw and I did a little art museum showcase, like with Legos and, yeah. you know, like a sculptures and, you know, I took my parents and, and family members like, okay, this is my exhibit, you know, this, look at this sculpture, this is, you know, and then, um, so I will also say this, um, I'm fortunate to have had um, parents that supported me in any creative endeavor that I did. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're, they're retired educators. I mean, so they were teachers. And so they definitely, um, were he are huge proponents of education and learning and, and promoting. So there were books all over the place, crayons, markers, anything, you know, and I think that contributed to, mm -hmm. you know, leading me towards a path. Exactly. Going back to what we said, you know, just when you, when you're willing to learn, just experiment different things, you know, just go out and yeah. paint, draw, you know, model, photograph, things mm -hmm. like that, you know, just, just go out and try things. You know, a lot of people, they, they take in that. And that's the reason why we also started this was because a lot of people would give negative, negative feedback to these people who have the talent and because they listened to it, you know, they, they never pursued what they wanted to do. So for example, assign you a friend who he was a really good photographer and you know, his parents would tell him like, no, you're not going to get anywhere with that. You know, you know, it's not going to pay bills, blah, 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 this and that, you know, just, just put him down. And he let his amazing talent go to waste, you know, now he's working, mm -hmm. you know, at a regular job, you know, hating it and, you know, not really expressing his creative process or his creative mind, you know, out there. But, um, you know, even at, even at that, what are you, what do you think are, are big characteristics that, that you think are, are really helpful to have, you know, being in the, in the creative field, you know? Some things, some things that you see in yourself, key characteristics you see in yourself that are, are critical to achieve what you want to do creatively, creatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so probably like one of my main ones I had already mentioned about just, you know, being open, uh, you know, maybe not taking yourself too seriously. I think, um, I see this a lot for some people, you know, I always they, keep the, the inner child inside of you. Sure, yeah, definitely yeah. that, you know, and, um, I think, you know, everyone has their, their style. Um, be open to, to like collaborating. I think collaborative uh, collaboration is fundamental to taking a creative space and bring it to a new level. Um, and so the more that we network and collaborate and support one another as a scene, we gradually lift ourselves higher exactly. higher standards and and i think this is important because um in these these are also com competitive they can be competitive fields um sometimes and so there's a tendency you know where people kind of want to make it us versus them and people want to front people want to put up this ego and fight a little and then uh, this is i think um unfortunately kind of how it's been historically in terms of creativity in El Paso, like in a lot of different scenes. Um, I, you know, I hate to say it, but that's kind of, I think a lot of people's experience and it rubbed people the wrong way. And so, you know, you hear the gra the whole crab in the bucket syndrome, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's pulling each other down. And, and so we have to move past that. And, you know, this is why I'm really excited about uh, a lot of you guys, the younger generations that are coming up, because I'm seeing a lot of, people that are more open to collaboration and, and are genuinely excited to see what everyone's doing. And I think yeah. um, as, as easy it is to be cynical about social media and, you know, uh, it's, it's too easy. Sheep will sheep, you know, you're trained yeah. new. I think that, sir, sure. To a degree, but that's super cynical too. It also brings us together. And so seeing what you're doing as a platform with El Paso creatives is, is kind of showing how we can 
create this uh, this web of meaning within ourselves that does lift one and each other up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Be willing to do that, you know. And and I think when we all succeed, you know, when we all succeed together, you know, we see that progress. Yeah. Like grow together, you know, not fight mm -hmm. against each other. And which is why, you know, I'm glad that you partnered with us on that Sun City Sounds platform that we have, you know, the virtual concert is because that's another way we can express to to lift up, you know, local musicians, local artists who who never given the opportunity to perform anywhere. You know, we we provide a platform for them to mm -hmm. to perform, you know, get them exposed, you know, lift up their spirits, you know, get inspired and give them hope and support. Support is the the most crucial part in in going into the creative industry as well here in El Paso, especially anywhere, you know, is having that support of you know, whether you're a musician, you have fans, you know, having your fans supporting you or people buying your paintings or, mm -hmm. you know, people wanting to shoot with you or go get local gigs with businesses, you know, it's having that support. And especially when we collaborate, like the Sun City Sounds, when we do our, when we did our first photo meet in January, it's just something that we learned there was when a bunch of photographers would come up to me and model and think like that. And like, this mm -hmm. is something unique that was kind of needed to be built here in El Paso is bringing creatives together everybody was always in their own path you know in their own in their own head their own bubble and you know when we had that photo meet it brought so many people together two months weeks later you know we had like we saw a bunch of like people collaborating on projects making cool photos things like that and it's just it's it's awesome to see you know it's like inspiring creativity locally and you know hopefully one day nationally and you know different cities and you know just bringing that creative mm -hmm. environment together you yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you, you said it right now. Um, unfortunately, some people are discouraged and have been discouraged. And so by creating uh, multiple platforms of support, um, you know, people can see part of their dream, like, be realized. Exactly. Um, and I think that's a wonderful thing. It's absolutely why I was I was uh, inquiring, you know, first, like, hey, how can we work together on a project to... Yeah to leading into Sun City Sounds, which I, I hope we continue to grow. Um, you know, I've, I have a little, I've had a little bit of experience, so I'm, I'm happy to get back into kind of the music side of things and uh, see where we go from there, obviously. Uh, by the way, um, we did touch a lot of, on this on, uh, we did a, a podcast, uh, my podcast, the Beyond oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. And uh, guess what? I was waiting to do this show before I put it out. So this is going to be released concurrently. So you can, you can expect oh, okay. it to be out this weekend. Um, and so that it's gonna be cool. cool. It's like a cross promotional thing. I want to be like, yeah. all right, cool. I was on. Man, that was a but, while back. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually uh, f recorded a, a an intro, like explaining, like this was recorded a couple weeks, a couple months back. Yeah. Um, I've been sitting on it, but we started this project, and so <laughs> now we get to through the lens of this podcast to kind of see how it's evolved in the last couple months. And yeah, and I'm interested in our conversations. Hear. Yeah, because yeah. it's uh, you're right. It's gonna be like an episode of like from when we first collaborated together and then to where we're at right now, we're speaking about the projects we're doing and you know, that we've already made that we talked about in that episode that we said we were going to make, you know, and it, it's just <laughs> interesting. I can't wait to hear it. It's going to be pretty cool to hear. Um, yeah. You know, as I had my role models, who've, who've been your role models? You know what? Oh yeah. That's a, that's a tough question. You know why? Because that's like, ask, well, to me, it's like, you know, when you ask what your, who your favorite artist, who your favorite song is and, yeah. I think it just always changes like, oh, well, what day is it? How am I feeling today? Who have you always out, like looked up to? Yeah. Um, I mean, so obviously, like, like I said, my, I mean, my, my parents, you know, in, in their different ways of, of teaching and growing up. Um, but that's also kind of maybe cheesy. I've never, I've never backed off from being cheesy, by the way. Uh, yeah. I always, I always tell this joke that uh, my spirit animal is a, is a quesadilla. It's a quesadilla. <laughs> yeah. Corny and cheesy. Uh, but, you know, uh, kind of speaking in a, in a creative sense, um, I'm a big fan of uh, jazz. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of um, tenor sax players, jazz musicians, um, John Coltrane, uh, I think, transformed his art into something that just transcended what it was. And it became something bigger than our own perspective. Um, you know, people like Miles Davis, who kind of ushered in like, four different genres of styles of playing for for you know each decade that he was around um after that uh i mean lots of artists i really love uh i really love like all the improv improvisational uh spontaneous creative types um uh, you know in, in grad school i 
I really started liking the beat generation of writers. Um, so Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, and they have their faults saying worth criticisms. Um, loved yeah. painters like Jackson Pollock and, and, uh, Wassily Kadinsky, uh, bebop, you know, like bebop. I said, as, as a, as a, as a art form, um, who inspires me? Damn. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, man. Honestly, you know, what does inspire me are moments. Um, and I can, I can definitely say, you know, moments that I've experienced at the open mic where, you know, all the stress of the world around us melts away and everyone is enjoying a poem or where we're all, we're all grooving to someone yeah. playing the original song. There is some magic in those moments where you're all in and the same. That's time. kept me going for so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that. Like where you're all just in the caught in the caught in the moment of it, caught in the same time. You know, it's just you're just enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before 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 we end this, you know, I wanted to wanted to see those questions that people have asked you. I know you had people ask you questions. It's true. Um, I don't want to miss that because I know you mentioned one of them, and I thought they were really important. So I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to get that was out. Yeah, there were there were quite a few, um, and and all of them addressed. Uh, I gotta find them now. This is my uh, my teacher with technology moment. Hold on, I know what I'm doing. Just let's get like your, your your top three. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the ones that I really enjoyed was um, someone asking about writer's block. Right? What's the best way to get rid of writer's block. block? Yeah, and I like that. You know, I mean, they're obviously asking me from the writing perspective, but any creative can any creative can attest to to this phenomena of just being blocked. Yeah. And it happens. <laughs> and what we mentioned earlier, like in the way beginning, you know, is like when you pick up too many projects, you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it stresses you out. Writing block is kind of the same thing. You get stressed about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think the first thing is, is with writer's block, don't panic. Um, it just might be, it's not time to write yeah. or, or do that thing. You might just need to focus on something else. And I do think that th that's the way the brain works, you know, you, it's working on it. It's, it's ruminating. It's, uh, you know, even if you're not aware of it self-consciously, you might be working it out in your head. Um, and so if you focus on another task, it's, it's there. And then it will pop up like, aha, we get our eureka moments. Yeah. Um, so, so like I, I think I said before, uh, I've alluded to, <laughs> it all melts together. This and the pre-show. Cause I've, I've some stuff I did say in the pre-show, I may not have mentioned here, but a lot of it is just, um, recognizing who you are as an artist yeah your art, your, you know your habits what works for you um and so i think when that happens i think um something that can be really helpful is to just kind of try and document your creative process mm, and you can do this in different ways you can use an app you can just write it down in a notebook but try and try and document when you do things and maybe do it for like two weeks um maybe do it like a you know like a timeline chart style like you might have like for a school 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 schedule notions yeah i mean yeah <laughs> notion you could build it but then here's a notion if the internet goes down you lose it you can't oh, access it true. did you know that <laughs> like like you said pen and paper yeah yeah so i don't know find find something but if after two weeks just go and, and look and see if there's any patterns like i mentioned it, it i realized i'm more active at night so i i kind of schedule my routine where you know if i do need to write um Maybe I'll, I'll do it more at e in the evening or nighttime and see what maybe if there's certain, you know, I know people find routine. I think that helps. Yeah. And uh, routine helps uh, writer's block. You know, I, I wrote down a bunch of whole notes and, and as much as we've been saying pen and paper, it doesn't help if, if you find your notebook, <laughs> <forget> right? <laughs> it's, it's somewhere around here. Like I, I left it. This is a big studio. Uh, by the yeah. way, I did want to give a shout out uh, really quick to, uh, my friends here at Genuine Reference Studios. This is where I'm at right now. This beautiful studio. Beautiful. Um, I'm here right now because we're we're kind of doing a charity live stream. They've they've been doing a live stream, but I'm collaborating with them on some aspects of it from hosting hosting style. So um, definitely check them out. And uh, you know, hey, they might collaborate with us in the future on some stuff too. So stay Hopefully. tuned. But I did want to give a shout out. I definitely encourage you guys if you're listening, just check out Genuine Reference Studios. They got some cool stuff. Very nice recording equipment. Yeah. Um, lighting area. Anyway, uh, inspired musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think I think also with writer's block, um, and I'll just say this. I'll try and be brief because I know we this is run run long. I tell I tell I told you I can talk, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> All right, let's keep going then. I'm just <laughs> so, three hour so, marathon. Yeah, the other thing is I think sometimes we misunderstand what it means to 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 create. Um, a lot of us sometimes, and I think especially if you're just starting, we expect to to put something out there and that's it. That's it, the perfect thing. In writing, you know, I think this is especially the case. I think some people want to just write it and there, it's done. Yeah. As as a as a teacher of writing, I know my students all the time. They write their essay and they're like, I'm good, I'm done. I don't need to look over this. I don't need to revise. I don't need to rewrite. Uh, when you probably time on it, yeah, should. Um, and so I think part of part of writer's block comes from an anxiety of the fact that like, uh, I, you don't want it takes work. Mm. Essentially, put creating does take work, and so sometimes you just gotta force yourself to do it. If you're a writer, write. If you're a painter, paint. If you're not feeling it, take a break. That's okay. But if you really want to do it, just just do it. And it's not gonna come out perfect, but it's something. And uh, I've heard I've heard this. Um, technique touted from all sorts of uh, experts some people say try and do something a little bit every day in your craft not so much where it's like too much like you said and it overwhelms you yeah. but like if you're a musician maybe write a, a song lyric mm -hmm. at least that at least one little thing that you can check off for the day if you want to do more do more but at least do that one little thing and, and then it builds up and and the, and again we, i think sometimes we do have we then we tend to romanticize creativity right this whole notion that Michelangelo, Michelangelo saw the step, the slab of, of marble. Yeah. And he saw the sculpture already. He just, he hit it and it all Very fell. Nearly. I think SpongeBob did that too. Uh, yeah. But, but, uh, we do tend to romanticize the, these notions and, and, and when it comes down to it, it takes time, dedication and, and working on skill on your skill. Mm -hmm which is repetition, doing it over and over again, getting feedback from maybe experts or not, maybe not experts, but more experienced people yeah. in your field. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, always just negotiating what's already existing in, in, in that landscape, yeah. locally, nationally, historically, all that good stuff. Yeah. And, and then that? I, <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Cause I agree with everything you just said. And I always, I can't, I can't stress it enough when I tell people, I'm like, don't rush it have patience with it. it go out and experiment you know try different things you never knew you thought you'd try you know there's things as happy accidents you know where you you do something just for fun and it ends up being the biggest thing you do you know um i like using billy ellish or billy eilish whatever her last name is as an example it's like you know when she writes music she literally just names random things in her room or wherever she's at and she makes a song out of that and it's a number one song on the billboards you know so it's just go out and do things you haven't tried before just experiment a lot um, of times we, we just hold ourselves back from yeah, like that too. Uh, what we think people or how people are going to respond to something, but it's all draft. It's all progress. So exactly, I think that might be some advice I would I would uh, give to my younger self if I had known. There you and go. If, if anyone who's young just starting out, like just don't hold yourself back, especially if it's you holding yourself back. Yeah, try it. It doesn't hurt to try you know for yourself see what works um see how you feel about it you can be a secret artist for a couple of months for a year for years from you know and then like you can be like oh yeah i've been working on this craft check this out i play i can play the spanish guitar and you just your friends are like amazed by that sometimes you know i don't know that was maybe like an extreme example but i mean don't be afraid to try that thing yeah you i mean never know. time passes you know a decade in my early 20s just went like that boom i was like did i try everything i wanted i mean i i lived i lived it i loved yeah. it i lived it and i loved it so um don't regret yeah absolutely mm. some regret some <laughs> but regret. that happens that's that's life you know we're not yeah. going to make perfect choices um so i just you know with with what i do with all the other projects and and b -Wams, which is especially and sun city sounds which is especially geared towards community I mean, I just, to me, that's where it's at. Building strong communities of support and, and supporting each other that way. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm with it. And I, you just answered the last two questions I wanted to ask you is your younger self and the piece of advice. Um, before we end this show, you know, Richie, where where can people learn more about you? Where can they see more about you or follow the BWOM series? 
Yeah. So if you are, I mean, if you're watching this, I actually did have a couple people uh, message or find me after the, just the promos for this show, which yeah. is cool. Um, so if you guys have listened this far, first of all, thank you. I love you. Um, definitely follow us at um, online barbed wire open mic series. I definitely invite you like you're invited any any skill level at open mic you can come it's it's open for anything it's very literary based so we do get a lot of poets a lot of writers um singer songwriters absolutely i would love to see more dancers and you, you know heck like because we're doing this on zoom there's a visual element you can share your painting and talk about it like, exactly yeah uh, you know, and show that for to people it's it's about just networking that's what it is so check us out barbed wire open mic series it, i mean if you just type that out anywhere facebook Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, it will, it will come up. Mm -hmm. uh, and me personally, um, just look me up, Richie, David Marufo. Um, I, I like to use Instagram. Um, so my Instagram handle is, is dead wall reveries, which is a, a very obscure literary reference. If you mm -hmm. get it, you get props. Dead wall. Um, <laughs> dead wall. I thought it was reveries. like a name of a movie or a book. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's not, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is an illusion. It's a literary illusion. So, um, I'm I'm still curious. I'm still waiting for that one person. I'm gonna to look like, it up. <laughs> Yo, this is a. I'm, actually, I wonder if you could type it in. It might it might kind of leave you breadcrumbs to what it is. But anyway, you can just look me up as well. Uh, Richie David Marufo, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, yo, I didn't even get to share or talk about any of my po poetry. So go check that out on my pages. Part two episode. <laughs> <laughs> just we'll leave it up to the universe. Yeah, I just looked it up. Dead Wall River is the first coined by Herman Mel Melville in the short what, story. Why are you spoiling it? I was just like, it's a secret. It's a mystery. Oh, true, and you're true, like, true. You're like, so this is, uh, I'm just kidding. It, I, I, it I still don't Herman know. Melville. I still don't get it though. So I'll leave the it up Bartleby, to. Bartleby, yeah. Bartleby. I'll leave it up to the, the listeners to figure it out what it is. Um, again, Richie. The thing is, um, sorry, last go one ahead. last thing. Go ahead, go ahead. Don't, go ahead. Be, afraid to, don't be afraid to reach out to anyone, you know? Exactly. So if you guys have any questions or are curious about any aspect um of i don't know writing or the scene or you're not sure about something i'm happy to look over any writing that you might send my way if you're curious about how to get into certain programs how to start publishing how to do anything just i'm happy to be a resource please come through we actually just got a writer so we're gonna start putting out articles now i don't know if one of them even hit you up i, I think saw I sent that. Some, yeah mm -hmm. send some of your your stuff to do interviews through we're gonna start putting blogs something like that and okay. i like how you mentioned that you know because networking is going to get you that's the only way you're going to grow if you network and collaborate you know, if you talk to people, if you're always quiet, you're not getting anywhere, you know, beautiful. All right. But Richie, I appreciate you for being on the show again, you know, check out your stuff. Um, I might even pop out on the next barbed wire. I want to, I want to pop out in one, at least one day. That'd be cool. You that should, would be, man. Yeah. I just don't know what to talk about, but I'll figure <laughs> something out. <laughs> Cause I know you leave uh, them for like 30 minutes to talk and I'm just like, hi, my name's Isaac. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can talk about the project a little bit. Um, Different that'd projects. be fun. Yeah. That'd be we'll Talk yeah. about it. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Richie, I appreciate you. I'm going to let you go. Um, have a good night. Charity event. I'll see you next time. All right. Have a good night, man. See, you, right, soon. see you soon. Bye. All right, bye.